Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I rise before you today to present House Bill 405, which is a bill that would require the boards of charter schools to participate in governance training. Current law requires traditional public school boards to participate in governance training, a law we passed a few years ago. And it's my belief and the belief of those who co-sponsored this legislation that we ought to bring charter schools up to the same standard and hold them accountable for managing public taxpayer dollars as we create a more robust em environment for charter schools to expand and we welcome them to our educational system. We want to make sure that the board members serving on those boards are well educated and prepared to make good decisions as fiduciaries of public taxpayer money. If you turn to the, if you look at the bill in section one, it relates to locally approved charter schools and says that local charter school boards should participate in initial training once those charter schools have been approved and participate in annual training. And this training would be conducted or approved by the state school board. And we're giving the state school board some discretion to determine how many hours school board members would have to participate and the type of training that they would require. Section two of the bill, sections two and three of the bill apply to state commissioned charter schools. And in section two, you'll see where it says the state charter commission shall approve or provide initial and annual board governance training. So the state charter commission we created a couple years ago would administer the board governance training for the state commission schools. And in section three, it deals with charter school board members of state commission charter schools participating in initial and annual board governance training. And again, that training would be administered and, uh, and applied by the state charter commission. It's a very simple bill. And again, this is something we believe will bring some accountability to charter schools and ensure that they have well-educated, quality, well-intended members on those boards who are going to do a good job managing our money. I'll uh, take any questions if there are any, and I ask for your favorable consideration. Do you yield for questions? I do. Chair recognizes Representative Turner to your left for a question. Thank you. Will the gentleman yield? I will. Isn't one of the advantages of having a charter school system or a, uh, a state charter school so that those schools could get out from underneath the regulations and requirements of uh, the state or or other functionalities of government? Yes, sir, that's correct. And do you have a follow-up? Yeah, do you further yield? Yes, sir. Do you foresee this placing any undue burden or duplicating any type of regulations that we might see in another type of school district or a local board of education? Well, it does create some uniformity. We, we currently require local school boards to participate in board governance training and we've allowed the state board some discretion as to how the training would be administered, the number of hours required uh, based on their expectations. And in this, the case of the state commission schools, the state charter commission, which knows best what is necessary for those boards and, and to make sure that we've got some good measures in place, they're gonna have discretion to implement the training for those, those charter school boards. Thank you, sir. Do you further yield? I do. Chair recognizes Representative Glanton to your right for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, sir, to my seatmate. Thank you. Is it not true that uh, I'm one of the founding members of a charter school in Clayton County? I believe that to be true. Uh, would you further yield? I will. Is it not true that I currently serve as a chair of the Board of the Governance Council? That is true. Would you further yield? Yes, sir. Is it not true that most of the folks that serve on these governance councils or volunteers do not have any formal training, but need to have this formal training as with any other board uh, for any other school district. Is it not true? I believe that to be true, sir. And, and I would say that there are many parents and people with good intentions that just may not have the background in managing a school. They may not understand school governance, constitutional and, and the statutory requirements related to public records and meetings. And this board governance training will go a long way to making sure that we've, we've uh, selected good people who not only have good intentions, but have good training and practical knowledge of managing schools. Final question, we yield one more. Is it not true that I strongly support this bill? Yes, sir, I thank you for that. Do you further yield? I do. Chair recognizes the chairman 
of the House Education Committee, Chairman Coleman, to your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman Yield. I do. Isn't it true that during the hearings we had on this bill that the charter groups met with us and helped us to perfect this bill? Yes, sir, that's correct. And isn't it true that they recommended that we involve them in some of this staff, staff development training so that they could have a part in training their people they felt needed this training also? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Do you further yield? I'll yield for one more question, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Dukes to your left for a question. Would the gentleman yield? Yes, sir. Where is it that these school would that these members go to obtain this training? That's going to be determined by the state school board and the state charter commission, and the entities approved by those groups will will determine where the training would be administered. Is, I, I, so I we're giving some discretion and flexibility. Is it not true that I think it's a good bill, and people certainly, if they're going to be over running schools, need to have formal training? Yes, sir. True? Yes. The other question is, is that in as much as we are providing this mandate for them to get this training, who's going to pay for it? Well, in many cases, the charter schools themselves will pay for it. But in current practice, the state charter commission has a 3% withholding of funds that go to charters that come from the charter schools. And that money is being used to pay for the training. So in the case of the state commission schools, the state commission pays for the training, and it would be at the uh, discretion of the local schools and, uh, and those school boards to determine whether or not it's going to be paid for by the charter school or by the, uh, the board. So what you're saying is that on those school systems, those charters that have been chartered by the local school boards, then who has the responsibility for paying for that? Right. It could come from either the 3% withholding or the charter school. No, these are the ones that are chartered by the local school boards. Yes. They come from the charter commission, you say, and not from the school boards? Well, for the, the uh, charter, the state commission schools, it's already being done where the state commission uses part of the 3% withholding to pay for governor's training. And this is something we're just codifying into law. Okay. It's a current practice. And for the local charter schools, it would be either the, uh, the school system or the charter school, depending on uh, what decision was made at the local level. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Speaker, I, I yield the well and ask for your favorable consideration. 